Figma allows you to import a range of image types into your design projects like JPEG, GIF, Ping, SVG, content you copy paste, and those images are brought into your designs as background images in frames depending on what they are. If they're an image, they'll do that. If it's vector, it'll stay vector and be editable. In this video, you'll explore adding a few image files and kind of learn how they work and also mask content. With my travel app open, let's zoom to fit everything. So you can press shift one so you can zoom to fit. There are a bunch of zoom commands we can use as we go here. And what I want to do is I want to put an image on a couple of these frames. So to place an image, you can learn the shortcut later, but you can also come up here to shape tools and place image or come under the file menu and do the same thing. Choose place image. Come to the exercise files folder and we're going to come to the O3 adding content folder. You should see we've got hike one and a whole bunch of images here. Let's bring in the home background.jpg here. Click open. You're going to see it's pretty big. If images are outside a certain range, it'll actually scale them down a bit. And what I want to do is I just want to click or click and drag to place. So I'm going to click and drag to create the image here. Now it's interesting, but look what it does. It's actually going to fill frame proportionally. So it'll keep it filled. You can press the shift key so you don't distort the frame at all. Let's make it about yay big. Release the mouse button and then the key. You're going to see that mine currently isn't associated with this frame. It's not being cropped or cut out. So you can drag it into the home if you want to, the home frame, and it should be doing this. You can then reposition it, kind of drag it around a little bit if you want to do that. That looks pretty good. Now when we place images in here, you can see that we can scale them and resize them. You can change the corner radius. If you look to the right over here, you're going to see that we can also do things like do blending modes if we want to. So we have objects on top. We can add multiple fills. An image is just a fill. So if you don't want the image anymore, you can either delete the object altogether or remove the fill. You can add a stroke. We can have effects and export it. Now what I want to do is I want to change the look of this. So if you double click on the image, now that was the same thing as coming over here and clicking. You can say, let's make it a fill, let's fit, crop, or tile to the actual frame that we're creating here. That's a bunch of different ways to fit it. You can rotate it. You can change things like exposure, contrast. You can choose, you can pick another image right here, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to increase, or yeah, I'm going to increase the saturation maybe a little bit. That looks pretty good. A lot of things you can do here if you want to try it out. And then close this up. Now let's put another image up here. So I'm going to press the space bar, move over. Come up here to the uh, rectangle tool and click on place image. Grab the hikes header. And we're going to do something similar. A little practice here. Click open. Click and drag. I'll go a little bit smaller. There we go. Now it's not associated yet. If you want to, you can try and move it into the frame and it should snap it in there, hopefully. There we go. And you can scale it if you want to do that. Make it a little narrower. You can grab it by the side, by the edge, however you want to do it. All right, now we're going to place a series of images over here. So space bar and drag over. We're going to draw frames first, though. What if you want to go in and, and maybe have an array of profile pics or something like that? Come to Login Home and click on Login Home to select the actual frame. You can also click inside and you're going to see Layout Grid. Click on the layout grid. We're going to make this a two column this time instead. That way we have a bit of a gutter in between so we can mess with that. Okay. Come to the rectangle tool. Leave a little room at the top here and we're going to draw a rectangle here. And then we're going to copy it a couple different times. So if you press option on Mac, alt on Windows and drag it across. Drag across all these or both these. Option on Mac, alt on Windows and drag them down. Make it look pretty good. There we go. Now we'll put in an array of images. So come up here, select place image. This time we're going to grab a bunch. So click on hike one, press the shift key all the way down to hike four and click open. And what you can do is, this is pretty cool. You can actually click inside of a frame and place it. So click, 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 click. Now something else we can do with our images. If we decide that we don't like how they're being cropped or presented, we can create a mask. So I press the space bar and move over. We're going to put a picture over here and mask it. We're going to place a few vector graphics and an image. So click up here and choose place image. Now you can also drag images into your designs if you want to do that. There's a lot of ways to get this done. Copy, paste, etc. But let's go to the gear icon. Press command on Mac or control on Windows. And click search icon. And then bio.jpg. And open all those up. 
And all we're going to do out here is you're going to see, okay, we've got SVG. Go ahead and click to place that. Click to place the other. And you're going to see the image here. Just click and drag to place it out there. Now I'm going to press the shift key so it doesn't crop any of it off or cut any of it off. There we go. Now, why don't you take these two icons and let's move them over here just so we have them out of the way. You can see these are two SVG icons that we can go in and we can continue to edit. If you double click on them, you can actually get into the layers and also the vector objects. You'll see in the layer stack over here what's going on. So whatever it was happening in the original application, that's what's happening. Okay, click on this image. I'm going to drag it in the center. You should see smart guides help us here. There we go, alignment guides. And we're going to draw a circle. So come up here. Select the ellipse tool, press the shift key, and just draw a circle. Now we can use this as a mask. So with these circles selected, this is kind of weird. This is different from other programs. It's not weird. It's actually kind of cool. What I want to do is I want to send it behind the image because the mask needs to be behind the objects that are being masked. So if you right click here, control click, send backward, come up top, as long as it's behind the image or the thing to be masked, you can click Use as Mask. It's now going to mask. We'll look over in the Layers panel. This is kind of interesting. You're going to see we have the image itself, which is the bio, and the ellipse. You can click on either going like this. Now, it's kind of tricky out here. If you click, you're going to select the image, which kind of makes sense because then you can go out and resize it and do whatever you need to do with it and move it around. I keep getting the right. And move it around. There we go. If you want to get to the actual mask, you can click on ellipse over here, and that allows us to select and make it bigger, make it smaller, whatever we need to do. That looks pretty good. It's kind of interesting, but if you put anything above this ellipse right now, it's going to be masked by the ellipse. For instance, if you take this image and you arrange it, I'd say right-click, bring to front. It's gone because it's being masked by this. I'll undo that by pressing Command-Z or Control-Z. If you want to remove a mask as well, you can select the masked object. You'll see it's highlighted. You can just turn it off. I'll turn it back on. With a few images out here and a little bit of masking done, the next thing you're going to do is add and format some text.